You may be seated this morning, you know, all around the world, there are songs being played about our Savior, and people even recognize and know that they are singing songs about the one who came to rescue them. Amen? We serve a good God who loves us so much, and my prayer for us this morning is, man, we lay down some things in our lives that we've been carrying around for a while. I believe today is a day of freedom, life, and liberty. I, um, we've been in a series entitled Unwrapped Gifts, and we're looking at these different gifts that we're going to be unwrapping during this season, you know. In this time, in this season, it's so easy to get caught up in everything. It's so easy to get busy. It's so easy to set our eyes on other things. But right now, what we're doing is we're taking a moment and we're unwrapping the gifts of love, joy, peace, and hope. That's what we're unwrapping this morning. We're unwrapping the gift of love. And I want to look at this gift as we unwrap this gift of love this morning. I want to wrap, unwrap it from this perspective. It's this, that, you know, love looks for excuses to extend forgiveness in the places where we have hurt, where we have uh, betrayal, where we've had uh, things happen to us that have been difficult. And what we're doing this morning is those moments and those things that we've been carrying around forever of unforgiveness, we're going to, what? We're going to extend love. We're going to extend forgiveness this morning, yeah? That's the gift we're unwrapping today. So would you pray with me? Let's invite the Lord just to speak to us this morning. Father, I, I thank you this morning for what you're going to do. Lord, we've come this morning with an expectancy, Jesus. Lord, we pray and we ask that God, any areas of our life, God, that we have been holding on to hurt, we've been holding on to unforgiveness, we've been holding on to deep pains and, and things that people have said about us or things that people have done. Today's a day, God, I believe and I know that through the power of your spirit, we're going to be set free today. That we're going to be able to walk into 2023 whole. We're going to be walking into 2023 into our destiny, Jesus. So Lord, we love you. We thank you, Jesus, for what you're going to do today. We thank you for the healing you're going to bring as we unwrap this gift of love and we extend love and forgiveness towards others. In Jesus' mighty, incredible name, and everyone said amen. 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 I've entitled my message this morning this, people are driving me crazy. People are driving me crazy. How many of you just feel like, man, people are driving me crazy right now? I want to ask you this question this morning is this, how many of you know someone right now who's a little bit difficult to love? Is there anyone in your life who's just a little bit difficult to love? Don't point at anyone in this room right now. <laughs> we all have people in our life that is a little bit difficult to love at times. We live in a season right now where it feels like People are looking for excuses to find offense, yeah? We're looking for reasons uh, to find reasons in their life of why, man, we're walking around with anger, we're walking around mad, we're walking around uh, with this spirit of offense that comes over us just so easily in this season. It feels like over the past few years, three, four years now, that the craziers are just out, right? Everywhere you look, it's just like everybody's going crazy. It's just cray-cray everywhere. In your family, you might say, man, that person's crazy, right? That other person's cray-cray. Listen, we are going to lay down our fences today. I read something recently that said that this is an age of perpetual offense. We live in an age and a season, really since COVID, when you look back, of perpetual offense. People right now are quick to get angry. They're quick to judge. They're quick to... Uh, point fingers in one another. We live in the season, hey, that person hurt me. I'm going to cancel them, right? We live in this cancel culture today. And what I've noticed is this, if you're continually looking for a reason to find offense, that you will find it. 
If you're looking for a reason to be offended, you're going to find a reason. I can promise you, if you're always looking to be hurt, to be offended, to be wrong, to be angry, you will always find what you're looking for. Here's the thing, though. The challenge is there is no win in this mindset. You are not going to win by having this mindset and putting on the spirit of offense that is running rampant in our society today. There's no one who says, man, my life is better because I'm just walking around angry and mad all the time. I'm much more productive because I'm walking around angry and mad all the time. We need to recognize that being offended is inevitable. But living offended is a choice. Being offended is inevitable, but living offended is a choice. And as followers of Christ, we will choose wisely. We will not allow difficult people in our life to cause us to walk around with offense. You know what offense does? Is it holds you back from your destiny. You see, God has a purpose and a plan for every single person's life in this room. And when you carry around the spirit of offense, when you carry around offense from someone else in your life, whether it's a friend or a relative or someone else's acquaintance or a coworker, when you carry around this offense, what happens is it's holding you back from the destiny that God has for your life. Today is a day of freedom. Today is a day of forgiveness, I believe. We're going to read a, an incredibly difficult text to live out. It's Romans chapter 12. And Paul writes this, and this is, y'all, this is, this is something we read, and we're like, okay, cool, it's good, but man, can we live this out? My prayer is today that we live this out. If you're ready for the scripture today, say, I'm ready. ready. Come on, tell your neighbor right now, are you ready? ready. Say, I'm ready. ready. Here we go. Romans 12, 14 through 21, it says this. Bless those who persecute you. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. Verse 20, on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. He says here, bless those who persecute you. We could say, bless those who are mean to you. Bless those who disagree with you. Bless those who have been short with you. Bless those who persecute you. What does this mean? This Greek word in the, in the Greek here, is this word eulogeo, which means this. It means a good word, or very literally, it means to speak well of or to wish the best blessings for someone. To simply just wish the best for someone. To wish the best for your enemies. It means speak well of and wish the best blessings for someone who's rude to you. Wish the best blessings for someone who betrays you. Bless those who persecute you. Paul gives us a very direct command to bless those who persecute you. In the, in the Greek language, this command is what's called a present imperative. A present imperative. And what that means is in the Greek language at times, uh, we'll see this present imperative, which means you don't just do it one time, but you continually to do it. You continually bless those who persecute you. So you can very literally translate this as, I'm going to continually bless those who are a continual problem in my life. Be continual blessing to those who are a continual problem. And I don't know about you, but isn't it really easy to bless someone who's kind to you? Who's generous towards you? Isn't it really easy to bless someone you really like? 
But to bless someone who has betrayed you, who has hurt you, who has done something to you, man, I don't know about you, but it's hard, it's difficult, isn't it? It's hard to walk in repentance. It's hard to forgive. Be a continual blessing to those who are continual problem. Because in our flesh, don't we want to retaliate? We want to retaliate, we want to stick up for ourselves, we want to, but no. What do we do? We extend forgiveness. So I want to give you three things this morning to help you to be a continual blessing to those who are a continual problem. Here's number one this morning. Be a continuous blessing to those difficult to love by loving as you've been loved. Loving as you've been loved. Romans 12.1. In view of God's mercy. Come on, say someone, say God's mercy. In view of God's mercy, how merciful has God been to us? How much has he forgiven us when we didn't deserve it, right? How much has he blessed us when we didn't do anything to earn it? Paul is saying in view of God's goodness, in view of God's grace, Paul tells us to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. And this is an interesting phrase. I want to come back to the living sacrifice here in a moment because of who God is and what he's done. He says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. I love this because if you, if you want to worship God, we said this earlier, it's not about a song. It's not about anything else, but it's an act of worship unto God that every moment of our lives is supposed to be worship, Right? Every single moment that we live is worship unto our Savior, unto our Creator. But this phrase, living sacrifice, because I I go back to that phrase, living sacrifice. What does living sacrifice mean? I think of sacrifice as something that is dead, right? But but living sacrifice is you're alive. Think of the Lamb of God in this, right? The Lamb of God. He laid down his life as a living sacrifice. What did he do? He willingly laid down his life. He said, hey, I'm laying down my life anyways. I'm laying it down because I want relationship with people. I want relationship with my creation. I want relationship with those. I want to be able to forgive. So he laid his life down as a living sacrifice. How do we love others? We lay down our lives from what we want to say. We lay down what we, our own selfish desires. We die to ourselves that so Christ can love others through us. Paul said it this way, Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. I'm crucified with Christ, yet we still live. I'm crucified, yet we live. I'm crucified with Christ, but it's no longer I who lives, but it's Christ who lives within me. So how do we love people? Because I don't know, I don't have my own way of, I don't have the ability, sometimes I want to retaliate, some other times I want to take revenge, but what do we do? We extend forgiveness, we are crucified with Christ, we love people through the Christ who lives within us. In view of what God has done, I let Christ love through me. Amen? We allow Christ to love through us. Number two this morning, be a continuous blessing to those difficult to love by making a choice to live in harmony. We're going to make a choice to live in harmony. Paul says this in Romans 12, 16. He says, live in harmony with one another. Live in harmony with one another. That's a great verse for when you're shopping at the mall on Christmas Eve. You're trying to get that last gift and it's crowded and it's it's crazy and you've got to extend uh, forgiveness towards that person who's driving you crazy. He's going really slow, isn't it? Live in harmony. (laughs) Don't get frustrated with the busyness. Hey, you're, you waited the last minute, right? That's what I do. I wait the last minute to get gifts. I need to, in that moment, say to myself, I'm going to live in harmony right now. Live in harmony. Do not be proud, he says, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. So he says, do not be proud. Do not be conceited. Do not be proud. Do not be conceited. Isn't it so hard in our day and age to not be proud, not be conceited? We always want to think that we're right. 
You know, the, the, the crazy thing is that we, we know enough about different things, different subjects to, to think that we're right, but not enough to know when we're wrong, you know? We know enough to think that we're right, but not enough often to know when we're wrong. We think, man, I, I'm guilty of this for certain things. Like, uh, I think because I've watched four YouTube videos and I've re- listened to three very biased podcasts that all of a sudden I'm right and everybody else is wrong, right? Don't we live in that culture today where we feel like, man, information and technology is right there and we can figure out anything at any moment. We feel like, okay, now I'm an expert on this field. We know enough to think that we're right, but not enough to know that we're wrong. So Jesus, he gives us humility to allow us to know when we're wrong. So we can walk in harmony with others. And so here's the thing with it. What the devil wants us to do is whenever we tell a story about someone else, he wants the premise to be about accusations because he's a great accuser of the brethren. So if someone does something to hurt me or offend me, Satan wants, Satan wants me to say, well, I can't trust them. Well, he's just out for himself. People are always going to lie to you. Well, that Christian does this and those Christians over here and that denomination and, hey, those liberals or, hey, those conservatives Accusation upon accusation upon accusation, because what do accusations do? As accusations erode marriages, accusations split friendships, accusations divide churches. The devil wants our stories about others to be rooted in accusations, but God wants our stories to be what? Rooted in love. Yeah? The devil wants us to hear these accusations and to take them in. But God is saying, man, we want our opinions, we want the way we view things to be rooted in love. Look at this, Ephesians 4.2. Be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your what? Go on, help me out. Because of your love. Because of your love. Be patient with each other making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Because of your love. Paul is saying, man, everyone has their own faults. Well, except for me, right? (laughs) I'm joking. We all have our own faults, every single one of us. We're not right about everything. We all have our own faults, but what do we do? We extend Forgiveness as Christ has for, extended forgiveness towards us. We extend forgiveness where maybe we feel like we need to. We're going to be quick to forgive because we all have faults. You must know this. You're going to be offended. It's inevitable. But living offended is a choice. We will all be offended because we all have faults, Paul's is saying here. But living offended is a choice. Imagine, imagine for a moment this. Imagine, imagine if Jesus was easily offended. He turned water to wine. Well, Mom, I just, I did this incredible miracle and you didn't really tell me how wonderful and awesome I am. Thomas, why are you always doubting? Imagine if he was easily offend, offendable. Imagine if he didn't know who he was and whose he was. He didn't walk in, in confidence. Imagine if he was easily offendable. May we hold him back, but he wasn't easily offendable. Jesus was sure of his calling. He did not get offended. Being offended is inevitable, but living with offense is a choice. Which leads me to point number three. Be a continuous blessing to those difficult to love by making a choice to let every offense go. Let it go. Let it go. Proverbs 19. This is so powerful. A person's wisdom yields patience and is to one's glory to do what? To overlook an offense. I'm going to read that again. So good. A person's wisdom yields patience and is to one's glory to overlook an offense. What does it mean to overlook an offense? This isn't the same as pretending that the offense didn't happen, right? It happened. But what do we do? 
overlooking offense is a conscious decision to let it go. I'm just going to overlook it. I'm going to let it go. It's essentially forgiveness in real time. We're going to forgive in that moment. We're going to overlook it. We're going to forgive. So this Hebrew word here is this word avor, to overlook, avor. Avor means this, pass over to get up above. So we, we won't dwell on, magnify, or replay our offenses. Rather, we're going to allow it to pass over. We're going to pass it over. You make a decision that my mission is more important than this. My calling is greater than this. I'm not letting it affect me. I'm letting it go. Someone's rude to you. I'm letting it go. Your mother-in-law corrects your kids. Man, I'm going to let it go. Isn't that hard to do sometimes? I'm going to let it go. Someone makes a passive aggressive statement towards you. I'm going to let it go. Your spouse makes fun of you. I'm going to let it go. We've got more important things to do other than just be perpetually offended. Listen, we need to apply this to the people we love. We need to apply it to our friends. We need to apply it to our coworkers. We need to apply it to that person in the, in the mall who's going really, really slow, who's in your way, who's at Christmas Eve, you're shopping for a Christmas gift and they're driving you crazy in that moment. We need to apply it and let it go. It's forgiveness in real time. We must not let hurt accumulate. We must not let hurt accumulate upon hurt. We're letting it go. We forgive in real time. Paul says this, Romans 12, 18. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, in other words, whatever's in your power, as far as it depends on you, Live at peace with everyone. As far as it depends on you, you're going to live at peace with everyone. That means the person that you're not talking to right now, you're going to do the right thing. You're going to live at peace. That person who was really rude to you, you're going to do the right thing. You're going to live at peace. The person who wronged you and took advantage of you, as far as it depends on you, you're going to do what's right. You're going to live at peace. Because listen to me, life is too short and your calling is too great to live offended. You still have a chance through through a fractured marriage relationship. I believe that God this morning can heal a fractured marriage relationship in an instant. Amen? Through the power and the presence of God, he can bring healing to that relationship. You still have a chance to bring relationship with your child. You still have a chance to bring relationship with your mom. You still have a chance to bring relationship with your dad. You still have a chance to forgive someone who wronged you or, or maybe see a miraculous restoration story that only God can write. Many of you, you still have have a chance. And you might be saying, Adam, it's so tough. It's so difficult. This assignment is tough. And we'll make excuses and we'll say, well, they haven't forgiven yet. They haven't come to me. And we'll make these excuses, but right now I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to allow you to lay it down, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice before the Lord, holy, acceptable, and pleasing, just as Christ died for you when you didn't deserve it. You're going to extend forgiveness towards someone, even though they don't really deserve it. Amen? We're going to walk in forgiveness. It is hard. It is difficult. It is, it, it is hard to, to make that step out, but we're going to do it today. I believe the Holy Spirit is going to give us favor to do it today. And you might be saying, Adam, listen, it takes them to come to me and it takes me to come to them. Listen, it takes two to reconcile and it takes one to forgive, right? It takes two to reconcile and it takes one to forgive. And so today I believe that, man, we're going to extend forgiveness. And this is what's on my heart for this message today. I just felt like the Holy Spirit was saying this. We're not walking into 2023 with any baggage, right? Life is too short. Our calling is too great to walk into next year 
with any baggage whatsoever. This can be the greatest gift in your spiritual life, in your relationship with the Lord. Just offer forgiveness. It's not easy. It's not easy to do it. But today, by the power and the grace of God, I believe that today we're going to do it. Amen. Would you rise with me over this room? bow your heads and close your eyes. I believe the Holy Spirit is just dropping names, faces into your heart right now where you can just extend forgiveness towards them. And I really feel a weight in this room. I've, honestly, right now, I feel a heaviness in this room. Well, we break the heaviness right now. We break the tension right now, God. Today is a day of freedom. Today is a day of no longer walking around with this baggage. Today is a day of healing. Today is a day of forgiveness. So Lord, would you help us to extend it? Extend it to others, Jesus. Lord, you're so faithful and good. We love you, Lord. What we're gonna do is the band's gonna play a song, we're gonna sing. Today you just need to lay down unforgiveness in your life. You need to lay down someone who's wronged you, someone who's hurt you. I want to invite you to come forward while they sing, while they play, and get prayer. If you just want to come and kneel at the altar by yourself, you can come and kneel at the altar by yourself. You know, one thing that's kind of dropping in my heart right now is the Lord's Prayer. In the Lord's Prayer, he asks us, forgive those who have trespassed against me. We're going to do that today, yeah? We're going to do it today. And it might, y'all, this is the thing, it might take days, it might take weeks, it might take months of just coming before the Lord and just continually saying, Lord, I forgive. 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 But after some time, once you just come before the Lord, the pure heart, he's going to take that and he's just going to allow you to walk in the fullness and the power of what he's called you to walk in. But you can't do it when you're walking around with unforgiveness in your heart. So this is the gift that we're unwrapping today. So as they pray, come forward to the altars. Find someone to pray with. You need to pray with someone. Let's just sing, let's worship, and let's just give this moment to the Lord. Come on, let's lay it down right now.